Hi folks, Brian Conroy here. I am in my shop again today. Um, it looks a little disheveled, but that means I'm doing some stuff, right? Um, but uh, let's try to make a long story short, or at least try to. Um, this is this hot new Predator, 11,500 watt, super quiet inverter and tri-fuel. All that is pretty cool, I think. And it's red. Is that hot or what? And uh, I hope I never need this, you know. Um, been here a long time without much trouble, uh, but you never know. The world is unsettled, isn't it? But anyway, even if I just walk by it, I think it's going to look cool. And I think that's, I think it was yellow or something. I wouldn't have bought it. So good job on you, uh, Predator Harbor slash Freight or whatever. But at any rate, um, the issue on this is, and if you've been on the internet, um, I should say on YouTube, looking at information on um, hooking your generator to your house, you know that there's a lot of talk about whether the uh, neutral should be grounded to the ground or what they say bonded to the ground or whether it should be floating. In other words, not connected to the ground. And uh, there's about 100 different resources from reputable people all saying the same thing. So I call that a, a, a truth that if you're using this as a standalone out in the field and you're running some saws or a welder on site somewhere and you're just plugging your equipment into the outlets, then uh, you want this bonded. This generator comes bonded. So the neutral and the ground are connected. And so, but if you're gonna use this on your house and uh, plug it in to a system to back up your uh, power, in case your power goes out from Armageddon or from the subduction zone earthquake, at 9.2 that's coming any day now you know thought it was going to happen when 3i atlas came by well it was ready but but at any rate if you're connecting it to your house you want it unbonded you do not or you want the neutral floating it's the same thing as it being unbonded so in other words the neutral is not connected to the ground or the case now this one even specifically says on it, there's a couple ways to tell that it is bonded, but the first one is right on the case here, let's get it to focus. It says neutral bonded to frame. So there's no question about it. The other way we know it's bonded to the frame is you can put your ohm meter, uh, put one slot in your neutral and one slot in your ground and you'll see you have continuity there. And uh, we can all do that, right? You just use a just use a multimeter. We've all got those multimeters. Where's mine? I just had it here. Here it is. So get my multimeter. And then when you get continuity and you put it on the sounding setting and you get a connection between the two, you get a beep. So you know you've got continuity between the two. So not that we need to do this because we know it's bonded, but let's just check it. So here we go. These two guys. Oh, come on. Uh, there. I've got it in the neutral and the ground. And there is full continuity. So we don't want that. So I was all over YouTube and there is nobody that would had any information on how to disconnect the neutral from the ground. And um, I guess flipping back a little bit, there are a lot of generators that, that come unbonded. And this one particularly though, they decided to ship it out bonded. So in my mind, there should be a dang switch on the thing that says bonded and unbonded so that you could switch it back and forth. Obviously, you could use this out in the field or you could use it for your house. So 
The other thing I'm disappointed in, there's absolutely no information on that in the manual. But it is code in the United States and smart to have it unbonded if it's connected to your house because your house is and your house's system, uh, the ground and neutral are already bonded. So if you have that bonded and this bonded, apparently it's it can be extremely hazardous if there's a fault in the house. Example, a broken toaster wire that connects a case and shorts. Um, but at any rate, so I want to be safe and I want to be the code. So I want to switch mine, but I'll be damned. There's just no information anywhere that I could find. And I tried to call Harbor Freight and they wouldn't answer the phone. Um, the, the 800 number in the manual turns out to be a home, uh, a Harbor Freight number. And uh, they keep saying they're too busy and then eventually they hang up on you and you say, oh, use the chat, use the chat. So I chat with somebody who knows absolutely nothing. She said, the only way you're gonna find out is to talk to a specialist on the phone number. And I said, the phone number doesn't work. She said, nah, sorry, can't help you. But anyway, I did find somebody this morning. Well, first of all, what I thought I was going to have to do, because on an older model or of a different model, I've seen him go into this ground port and on the back side, the neutral white wire was connected on the back and that's where they were bonded. So suffice to say, I took the whole dang thing apart yesterday and there is a ground wire obviously here and there's another wire attached to it, but it's not white, it's yellow. And I disconnected that one and then tested it and it was still bonded. So that is not the solution. Very frustrated. Like I said, I called Harbor Freight, no help. So I got on the internet again and tried to go to ChatPT, GPT, and something finally came up from a Facebook post. Lo and behold, let's get to the point, right? Well, you don't have to take all this apart. The bond is right down here by the oil drain. This is it right here. And you can't see it here, but once you pull the wire off, it says N on there for neutral. And obviously it is grounded to the case by, it's grounded to the uh, block of the motor aluminum block. So if we just take that off, now we're loose, right? Let's put some tape on that and we can tuck it back in. But now prove it, Brian. Prove that this is unbonded. Well, we still have our own meter and it's still, when it, still on. It hasn't shut itself off yet. And we come down here I think we can do this. Yeah, we can do this one hand. We did it a minute ago. Um, so let's go. One in ground and one in neutral. Nothing. And I tried it on the top too. Anyway, there is no continuity, which is absolutely what we want for safety and code. Um, you know, I don't know about you, but Murphy's Law is I'm not going to be here when the power goes out. I'll be screwing around somewhere, drinking at the bar, you know, asleep at the wheel at the uh, traffic light. And uh, the power will go out and my wife will be here. And yes, I'm going to go over the whole procedure for her on how to get this thing going. But um, I wouldn't want her to be running this in an unsafe condition. I was almost ready to give up and say, I'm just going to connect it. And I see there's people who bought these online now. The thing that's new about this, as far as I understand, because I looked at these last year and I didn't buy one. I've got my whole system set up for it, but I, I wanted to get it be prepared this time because the world is coming apart even worse than it was last year. So they had the Predator 1150, 115, I think last year as a inverter uh generator but i don't think it was tri-fuel and now it's tri-fuel which is super cool because i've got propane i've got natural gas over it there i could run that line outside and run it off natural gas or it runs off gasoline and i like the fact that it's 50 it's got a 50 amp service 
and I, I just didn't want to be below a thousand for this is a pretty big house here it's no different than any other house you're not going to run a whole bunch of stuff all at the same time but you never know and it's nice to be have a little extra capacity so i'm pretty stoked about this whole thing and i'm happy that i found the solution and so um if you see this and you know somebody who's getting one of these please um send them my link to this video so that we can all know how to get this done with the 30 second job of just taking the uh the neutral off of that engine block and then isolate it with some tape anyway i hope this helps i'm sure it probably will because i know i've done other videos like this and people appreciate it and i appreciate it so much when everybody else posts and so as far as i know i'll be the first one to post this on youtube and so um other people post it too so that these poor guys shopping at harbor freight like i do uh can have a safe generator you all stay safe talk to you later